Hello, I'm meteorologist David Kramer with Alaska Weather. Thanks for joining for this update of the Bering Sea Storm that we have that's going to impact the west coast of the state. Starting off, we'll do some of the main highlights for this storm. This is remnants of what was Typhoon Halong. This is potentially a record-breaking storm for areas like Gullivan and then down through much of the YK Delta area as well. The main impacts that we'll see are going to be Saturday night through Monday night, uh, with some areas seeing a little bit expanded time frame and far to the north and down by the Pribilof Islands. Areas south of the Bering Strait are anticipated to see the brunt of the coastal flooding impacts. Eastern Norton Sound area through the YK Delta is expecting to see impacts that have higher water levels than what we saw during Murbach and than what we saw last summer in August 2024. Southern Sewer Peninsula area is expected to have water levels slightly below the Murbach levels. And north of the Bering Strait, around through the Kotzebue Sound area and up to the northwest coastline, expected to have water levels slightly below those that occurred earlier this week on October 8th. Of note, also down in the Kuskokwim River area, with the strong storm surge coming up and southwest winds pushing that storm surge into the river area, from the mouth of the river through around Bethel, the area or communities around the river could see some flooding from storm surge causing the river to back up. Moving forward, we'll take a look at the big picture of some of the warnings that we have out along the west coast. Then we'll take a look at some timing with the storm moving through. And finally, we'll look at some of the specifics for communities uh, that will be impacted by X typhoon Halong. Starting in the Pribilof Islands, we have high wind warning out for the area that's going to start this evening. We have Coastal flood warnings all along the west coast from the Kuskokwim Delta area all the way up to the northwest coastline. We also have high wind warnings out for the Kuskokwim Delta area through the Kotzebue Sound area. And we have some high wind watches a little bit further inland in the western portions of the interior. Talk a little bit more about timing and specifics as we move forward. Oh, taking a look now, uh, this is going to be for Saturday afternoon, our low pressure system just making it in to the southern portions of the Bering Sea. And we're going to start to see some of the stronger winds impacting the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, some of the easterly winds there for the Pribilof Islands. As we move into Saturday night time frame, Halong will have moved up near the Pribilof Islands, just off to the north and west of the islands. This is going to bring really strong southwest winds to the Pribilof Islands. This is going to bring high seas. Seas can get up to 31 feet coming into the harbor from the southwest. We're also going to see in this Saturday night time frame throughout much of the central Bering Sea, eastern and northern Bering Sea, the potential for hurricane force winds out over the Bering waters. As we move into Sunday morning, the low will have uh, moved up into the northern Bering Sea. We're going to have very strong winds out of the southwest pushing into the southwest coastline. This is when we're really going to start to see some of the coastal flooding concerns and high wind concerns all along southwest coastline. As we move up into Sunday afternoon, the Halong Low will be up by the Bering Strait area. Strongest core winds now will have pushed in out of the southwest into the Norton Sound area, really bringing an increased risk for coastal flooding to those locations. Even though winds have died down a little bit in the YK Delta Sunday afternoon, we are still expecting high concern for coastal flooding because when the tides come in with those stronger winds and long fetch, we will still have coastal flood impacts, even though the wind speeds themselves will have died down a little bit. As we move into Monday morning, the low will be up closer towards Ukiagvik. We'll start to see a transition to west and northwest winds in the Kotzebue Sound area with some strong winds coming in there. Still seeing some southwest winds in Norton Sound area Monday morning as well. And then finally Monday afternoon, the low will have pushed off into the Arctic. Still seeing some stronger winds uh, along the eastern portion of the Arctic coastline and still enough Westerly winds along the northwest coast to continue to see coastal flooding concerns up along the coastline be lasting into a Tuesday morning up there. We'll take a look a little bit more specifically at some of the communities. We're going to start down south and look at some of the timing. So you notice here we have starting Saturday 10 p.m. And we'll see there uh, with that little wave symbol that's for looking for a flood watch for the Bethel and all those areas from Bethel down the Kuskokwim River towards the mouth of the river are going to have similar situation as Bethel here. And they're going to continue to see that flood watch all through into Monday. Some of the other areas, Kipnik, 
Tuxuk Bay, Makoriak, and Kungilinok are going to see uh, concerns for coastal flood warnings pick up in Sunday at around 4 a.m. Also note the colors behind those are some of the wind speeds. We have stronger winds already Saturday evening, getting up to 65 miles per hour. But as we get into Sunday morning, 4 a.m., Kicknuck, Tuxuk Bay, and Macoriak all seen uh, gusts up to now 65 to 80 miles per hour. Then as we get into Sunday morning, continuing to see coastal flood concerns, winds starting to pick up even more Tuxuk Bay and Macoriak, now seeing winds that are possibly more than 80 miles per hour. Sunday afternoon, going to start to see the winds die down, but again, we're still going to have that coastal flooding concern. And then finally, as we get into Sunday, still seeing winds that could be as high as 50 miles per hour, but dying down a fair amount and losing that coastal flood concern. So now we'll look a little bit farther to the north. Uh, starting up north, we're going to see all the winds that could be up to as high as 50 miles per hour, but picking up throughout the evening and overnight hours on Saturday. As we get into Sunday morning, 4 a.m., we're going to see Hooper Bay, Unalikli, and Gamble all getting up to potentially as high as 80 miles per hour. Going to start to see some coastal flood concerns at those locations as well. Then down Nome and Kotzebue, also seeing the flood warning come, or the coastal flood warning come into effect. They could see winds up to 65 miles per hour. Going to see those trends for those locations continuing throughout the day on Sunday with Hooper Bay uh, getting some of the strongest winds there, over 80 miles per hour, with a chance to see wind gusts to as high as 100 miles per hour for Hooper Bay. Coastal flood warnings for these more northern locations are going to last longer as the low is going to move up the west coast of the state. These could last into Monday morning for some of the more northern locations. Gamble and Hooper Bay, we do expect to drop off uh, in the early morning hours on Monday for that coastal flood concern. And winds will continue to taper down throughout the evening and overnight hours Sunday getting into Monday time frame. A little bit more specifics for some of the winds here. Um, we do expect very strong winds throughout the west coast from this storm, including the Pribilof Islands, where in the Pribilof Islands we could see gusts up to 85 miles per hour with 95 miles per hour possible. For perspective, a Category 2 hurricane has wind speeds starting at 96 miles per hour, so we are uh, expected to approach, but not quite get to, Category 2 hurricane levels for the Pribilof Islands. Cusacum Delta Coast expected to see gusts up to 90 miles per hour. Hooper Bay going to see gusts up to 80 miles per hour. In that Sunday morning time frame, we are expecting a 6 to 12 hour block of time where we could see winds approaching 100 miles an hour. St. Lawrence Island could see gusts up to 70 miles per hour. Southern Seward Peninsula and Eastern Norton Sound could see gusts up to 70 miles per hour as well. And then north of the Bering Strait expected to see gusts uh, up to 60 to 70 miles per hour. Strongest closer towards the Bering Strait as we get farther into Kotzebue Sound expecting to see uh, closer to the 60 miles per hour range. For any additional details or specifics about any of the information that I covered or any of the coastal flooding information, more on the high winds, please check our website, weather.gov slash Alaska. You can get any updated details on there. Again, that is weather.gov slash Alaska. With Alaska Weather, I'm David Kramer. Thanks for watching.